Yom Kippur is the holiest day of the year for the Jewish people. And on that most holy day in 1973, Israel's Arab neighbors were out for revenge. Israelis were alerted to a barrage of imminent rocket attacks that would come to signal the start of the Yom Kippur War. The coordinated attacks came at the hands of Egypt and Syria, who wanted vengeance for the losses of the Six Day War. The IDF was outnumbered on every front, from manpower to weaponry, and the Arab forces were able to inflict a lot of damage. Hundreds were dying every day, morale was getting lower by the hour, and top Israeli officials were desperate. Once the U.S. realized the gravity of the situation on the ground, they started sending arms and tanks to Israel. The extra support was enough to turn Israel's luck around and get Arab forces to agree to a ceasefire. Today, the Yom Kippur War is counted as a technical win for Israel, but it certainly didn't feel that way at the time. What makes this war stand out is that it proved Israel can't afford to let her guard down. Whether it's responding to rockets from Gaza in the south or Lebanon in the north, or to suicide bombing attacks from Palestinian terrorists from the West Bank. Of course, taking these actions has always been a double-edged sword for Israel, because doing so often means facing international condemnation. So when you see media coverage that constantly paints Israel as a violent oppressor, ask yourself, would you want your leaders to stay silent in the face of brutal aggression?